Hey, Sarah. Will you clear out the snow in front of the house? Good morning, Mom. Sorry, but could it wait until Mary goes to sleep? She's in the middle of drinking milk right now. You can just have her drink that later. Shuffling the snow should only take like 30 minutes, right? I'm going to be heading out in a bit. I want you to do it as soon as possible. Well, that's... Look, Mom. I just gave birth to Mary. She's still just a newborn, so could you go easy on me? I thought, if possible, I'd like you to take care of clearing it out instead. You're really telling your elderly mother-in-law to shovel snow? What an unpleasant daughter-in-law. I'm sorry. But there's not much I can do to help you right now. Truly a wicked daughter-in-law, huh? Every day I'm forced to listen to my granddaughter's cries and I lose sleep over it. Despite all that, you have the nerve to tell me to shovel the snow. Back in my day, you'd be thrown out of the house for that. But when this two-family house was built, you promised, right? The front entrance is separate, but you said we'd all work together to take care of the outside space. Plus, I also remember you saying you'd help out with taking care of my baby. Hey, you know what? This is still a compromise. I am in bad health hearing Mary's cries every night. Normally, the daughter-in-law would do the chores in her own house, but the fact that I'm having to do it... Sarah, ever since giving birth, don't you think you've been taking advantage of me? That's not what I was trying to do. Normally, someone would be grateful that I'm even here. Whenever something happens with you guys, I take care of it while Andrew is on business trips. But despite all that, I'm having work forced on me. Truly cruel. I wonder why Andrew married someone like you. Even though I did my best to raise Andrew, he goes and marries this kind of woman. All right, I get it. That's enough. I'll shovel the snow in a bit. Ah, is that right? As long as you understand. Well then, by all means, go right ahead. Mom, did you notice someone outside just now? What? What happened? I think someone just threw a snowball at our window. There was no one there when I went and looked out the window. It was a pretty loud noise. Did you happen to see anything? Sorry, but I wasn't in the living room. I was just doing the laundry, so I didn't hear anything. Some neighborhood kid probably just hit our window on accident, right? I thought that at first, too. But this has actually been going on for days. Wow. Really? Also, it seems to happen whenever Mary is crying. It seems like they're aiming it this way on purpose. So, that's how it is. I've got it. Huh? Now even the neighbors are fed up with Mary crying. I'm sure of it. That's why people are throwing stuff at the house. But since it's winter, the windows are closed. I don't think she cries loud enough for anyone to hear with the windows closed. Her cries were that much of a bother, huh? I mean, I can hear it here, down on the first floor, even when it's on the opposite side of the house. It sounds louder than an airplane taking off. I can barely sleep. Since this area is suburbs, it's quiet, is it not? Yeah, it is. I'll see if I can find something to soundproof the windows. That would be good. While you're at it, if you also did something so I don't have to hear it, I'd be grateful. I got it. Sorry for all this, but... To throw snowballs at my window? It's a bit absurd. Unsettling, really. Huh? What are you trying to say? You're the one that's causing problems for me and the other people in the neighborhood. Since you're the one making her cry, it's on you, right? You're failing to recognize the issue at hand. You're the one who's being absurd. What? I wasn't trying to say anything. I was just saying that it's childish to throw a snowball at someone's window. It might just be some kid's prank. You're always exaggerating. The first thing you should do is properly discipline your child. Then, after that, you can say all that about other people.
Mom! What are you doing? You're asking what I'm doing? I'm getting lunch ready right now. The window was just broken by a snowball. Shattered glass was scattered all over the place, and I got hurt. What? Really? I didn't hear anything. So you can hear Mary crying, but you can't hear the sound of glass being shattered? I've been keeping the TV volume up high lately. Because Mary's cries are so bothersome. <laughs> Mary's crying was that annoying, huh? That's right. To the point where I lose sleep, since the crying is constant. All afternoon, all night. There's no break from it. I'm going to end up having a nervous breakdown. Well, then why don't you leave the house or something? I never once asked to live here. Ah, so it comes out. My evil daughter-in-law. You wait until Andrew's on a business trip to say terrible things to me. I should be the one saying that to you. This time, I decided to call the police. I'm not going to stand for this anymore. The police? Why? Because I got hurt from the broken window glass. It's property damage and bodily harm. I won't just stand by and accept this. Wait, wait. Don't you think you're overreacting about this? Especially since it's probably just a kid in the neighborhood pranking you. Would you just ignore it if this was happening to you? Or... Are you saying this because you're the one that threw it? Do you have any idea what you're saying? How could a parent with any decency say something like that? Do you have any proof that I threw it? I saw footprints when I went outside earlier. If it was someone else, there would have to be more footprints coming from the outside, no? But the only footprints I could find were ones that came to and from your front door. Don't you think it's a little odd that the tracks are in a U-shape and they go right in front of the living room window? Care to explain yourself? That's your proof? How idiotic. The police wouldn't even give you the time of day. And not to mention, it was just a snowball, right? It will have melted by the time they get here, so you'll have no proof. <laughs> Even if you call them, they'll think you're making it up. Huh? If it's proof you're talking about, I have some. What? There's no way you do. Do you really think a snowball could break a window? Maybe if you were a pro baseball player, but it'd be impossible for a normal person. You'd have to freeze it solid, or put something like a rock inside. Oh, by the way, the snowball that was thrown in our house had a rock inside it. A rock? Yep. Plus, that's not the only proof. Since snowballs have been thrown at the house for days now, I've been taking videos of it. I bought a little security camera and put it in the corner of the window facing outside. And what is it you think I saw? Videos of a nasty old woman in her 60s aiming at our window with everything she's got. And she had quite the look on her face. Mother, you're really full of energy, aren't you? So that's the body of a woman who can't even muster the strength to rake some snow? You. You've been going and taking videos? Delete them right now. As if I'll delete them. Sure, I was the one who got covered in shattered glass. But when I think about it happening to Mary, it makes me want to do the same thing to you right now. I guess there's no use trying to deny it. I was the one who threw the snowball. I had no intention of putting a rock inside. That was truly a coincidence. I guess I accidentally scooped up a rock when I made the snowball. So, about calling the police. How about we cool down a bit? I am cooled down. Mentally and literally. Because there's a hole through my window in the middle of winter. I'm thinking calmly. The window broke, I got injured, and now I'm calling the police. Family or not, I won't allow this. Sarah, forgive me. I won't do it again. I'll take care of the repair cost and the medical bills. Okay, so how about we hold off on calling the police? Well, of course you're going to pay for all that. Oh, Mom, why don't you take a look outside? It looks like they just got here. Huh? Who? Wait! The police are already here? 
Of course they are. It is an injury case, after all. Since there was an injury, Andrew told me to call the police right away. But I already had. What? But hey, this is a good thing, right? From now on, you'll be able to go to a place where you can't hear a baby crying. You finally got what you wanted. I gave the police the video I took, and my mother, who confessed about the snowballs, was arrested. There was also the point about how I'd been harassed, despite having just given birth. It seems like she was really chewed out by the police. Even still, she was a first offender, and she really didn't mean for there to be a rock in the snowball. So, on the basis that it was an accidental cause of injury, she didn't receive a prison sentence. But whether or not my husband and I will forgive her is a whole different story. After thinking about what the worst thing my mother-in-law had done, we decided to send her to my grandmother-in-law's house, which she is not happy about. My husband's grandma is over 80 years old, but she's still very active and does a lot of farm work. When we told her about my mother-in-law, she happily agreed to knock some sense into her for a few years. Because of that, it seems that my mother-in-law is now doing her most hated chore, snow shoveling. <laughs> the area we live in gets heavy snow, so she shovels snow for hours a day. She tried to reach out to my husband and I for help, but I blocked her number. My husband is leaving her on red. Thanks to that, we're able to devote ourselves to taking care of our kid. By the way, when spring comes, we plan to remodel the area that my mother-in-law was living in. We plan to put my grandmother-in-law into an old folks' home after a few years, so... So, my mother-in-law will be driven out of her house once again. But when that time comes, we don't want her to rely on us. According to her, it was just a small bit of harassment. So she never thought it would become such a big thing. But me having just given birth and getting even less sleep than my mother-in-law. I will never forgive her for bringing harm to my newborn baby, Mary. If I hadn't been holding Mary just right, she might have been the one to end up injured. Even if my mother-in-law has a change of heart while living with Grandma, I will never live with her again after this. Of course, I won't be giving her a helping hand either. If she appears in front of me ever again... I'll really give her a reason to call me her evil daughter-in-law. Hi, Steph. This is Elaine's mother. I have something to ask you. Hi, Mrs. Carson. Sure, what is it? Sorry to message you this late at night. Elaine hasn't come home yet. You went with her to play by the river today with the others. She's still with you, right? We said bye to each other a while ago. Elaine left us before it was dark. What? In the evening? Then, do you know where she went? Did she say that she was going to meet up with other friends? Nope. I don't know anything. Do you remember exactly what time she left? I can't say for sure what time she left, but probably around five? We all left soon after her. I don't know what happened to her after that. Is that so... She's never come home late before. This is the first time that she is out past curfew. I'm worried, so if you remember anything, any detail at all, could you please let me know? Sure, will do. Thank you so much. Sorry for messaging you so many times. I contacted most of Lane's classmates, but no one seems to know where she went. I'm thinking that I need to go to the police and report her as missing. Could you tell me the exact location where you guys went? Huh? The police? Isn't that a bit much? She's only been gone for a few hours. She's probably just chilling somewhere. About that. My husband went to look for her by the river. We found her phone by the bridge. We're scared that she might have fallen into the river. So you're going to tell the police about us, too? My parents will be shocked and furious if you do. You're making it sound like I had something to do with all this. If the police do end up going to your place, all you need to do is answer their questions truthfully. 
Could you cooperate with us? Elaine doesn't have her phone. That thing is usually permanently attached to her hand. Something must have went wrong if she doesn't have her phone. That might be true, but to go to the police? That's a bit dramatic. If you cause a big scene, wouldn't it make it hard for Elaine to come home? That would be so embarrassing. Just wait a bit. I'll ask around. Hey, Mrs. Carson? Did you read my message? Oh, sorry. I'm getting a call from my husband. I'll get back to you soon. Again, sorry for doing this so late at night. Good morning. Can I talk to you for a second? What? It's still only 8 a.m. Today's a Jewish holiday. There's no school today, so I want to sleep a little more. We found Elaine yesterday. Seriously? That's great. I told you she probably just went somewhere. Where did she go? Did she say? We found her half a mile from the bridge where we found her phone. Almost at the end of the river. My husband found her when I was texting with you yesterday night. Oh, really? She was by the river this whole time? No way! Seems like she fell into the river and was swept away, but thankfully she was able to get to a spot where the current wasn't so rough. When they found her, she was suffering from hyperthermia, and she was in and out of consciousness. She was rushed to the hospital right away, and the doctor said that her life isn't in danger and she will make a full recovery. Elaine just regained her consciousness, too. Oh, really? Did she say anything? Say anything? What do you mean? Nothing. If she didn't say anything, then it's fine. Is there anything that you need to say? Not really. Why don't you try being honest? You do have something that you need to tell me, don't you? It was you who pushed Elaine into the river, wasn't it? You wouldn't want Elaine to say that, right? What are you talking about, Mrs. Carson? I would never do anything like that. What are you trying to accuse me of doing? Accuse you? Elaine said it herself. You told Elaine to jump off that bridge. And when she refused, you pushed her off it, right? What? I have no idea what you're talking about. Elaine is lying to you. Why would Elaine lie to me? I heard it from the other friends, too. They all said the same thing. Are they all lying? The people that were at the river with you saw you push Elaine into the river. They are willing to testify. What? That's unbelievable. Everyone is talking bad about me. They have it out for me and for no reason, too. That makes me so sad. Stop playing around, Stephanie. Everyone got scared of you after you pushed Elaine into the river. They all left you. You also threatened them and told them not to tell anyone. I told you, I have nothing to do with this. One of the people that were there took a video of what you did. I have all the evidence that I need. Ugh, I didn't do it to hurt her. Then explain yourself. What were you thinking when you pushed her? We were all just playing around. As a test of courage, we went to that bridge. Everyone else jumped off of it. Only Elaine refused to. We all said that we would do it and she was bringing the spirit down. Everyone was going to hate her for being a spoil sport. So I did her a favor and helped her out. Elaine is afraid of heights. She can't stand tall places. She didn't want to do it. She told you that, but you still forced her. That's not right at all. She was the one that broke the promise. It's her fault. She shouldn't even have come to the river if she sucked at swimming. Stephanie, why are you always picking on Elaine? You're always doing something to make her feel bad. Yesterday was no exception when you invited everyone to the river. If Stephanie didn't go, you would have made her regret it. You would have bullied her. You only pretended to be her friend. Ugh, look here, Mrs. Carson. Of course I did that. Why do I have to even be friends with her? I'm super popular, you know? Everyone loves me, including the teachers. 
Elaine, on the other hand, is ugly and stupid. We shouldn't be friends. Our levels are totally different. Is that the way you think of Elaine? You treat her so badly. Do you hate her that much? To the point of pushing her off a bridge? I'm just saying the truth like you said. Mrs. Carson, do you understand school caste? A perfect person like me is on the top of the caste system. And a girl like Elaine is way at the bottom. No one worries about someone at Elaine's level. She isn't worth anything. No one will even care if she is gone. Listen, Stephanie. It doesn't matter how popular you are. Your life at school doesn't apply to the outside world. What you did is illegal and criminal. We have to press charges. Are you going to take responsibility for your actions? What? Don't be annoying. What responsibility? Elaine could have died if we didn't find her. What you did was a crime. This is very serious. She's alive, isn't she? Even if she is alive, a crime is a crime. You've taken it beyond schoolyard bullying and you won't be able to talk yourself out of this one. You should really consider your actions and how you made us feel. Oh god, are you really lecturing me right now? You should stop. It's making you look bad. The parent of a low-level child makes you low-level too. I don't have to listen to you. I should let you know that my daddy is the boss of a big company. Whatever you want to do can't hurt me. It won't even make me itch. Oh my goodness. I was trying to be nice because you're still a child, but your personality is truly rotten. Why are you even getting angry? I thought you were supposed to be an adult. Stephanie, you seem to think that your status at school and your parents' status is everything. You think that your position is better than Elaine's, but that might only be in your tiny little pond. The world is a much bigger place than that. Positions change. It doesn't matter what you say. I'm not listening. Don't make me repeat myself. You're so annoying. I've had enough of this. I'm just going to block you. Bye bye Fine. I see how it is. Don't regret it. Mrs. Carson? What is it? I thought you blocked me. My dad told me to contact you. You told my dad all about this? I couldn't get through to you, so I contacted your parents after you blocked me. You showed no remorse for your actions. Not only that, but your thinking process is all wrong. So I had no choice but to contact your father. He said that he will make you understand what you did and hold you responsible. Your father must have been really angry at you. It was the first time my daddy talked to me like that. He was so angry. He has never yelled at me before. I actually got a little scared. By the way, is what he said true? That my daddy gets most of his business from your husband's company? Yes, that's right. They call that subcontracting. Your father and Elaine's father do business together. Is it also true that Elaine's father is in a higher position than my daddy? That's a lie, right? There's no way that can be true. Why is her father better than mine? That's impossible. That's not the way the world should be. In reality, people aren't above or below each other. We are all equal, and we all have the same rights. But for businesses, there is a side that gives order and takes order. Unfortunately, the side that gives the orders are in a better position than the one that relies on taking orders. I think what you did caused a strain in the business dealings of the fathers. If my husband stops contracting your father's company, your father's business is going to go under. There might even be talks of bankruptcy. That's going to have a big impact on your lifestyle. Bankrupt? You're exaggerating again. My father's company can't go under that easily. It's true the companies don't fall that easily. But my husband's business is the biggest contract that your father has. Their business figures are in numbers that you can never even imagine. If your father lost that, he will be losing most of his profit. It would probably put him out of business. But they can't just stop working together. My daddy will still get those contracts, wouldn't he? 
It would be bad if they stopped doing business just because of this. That's mixing private life with business life. That's illegal. I don't think you have any idea what you're talking about. Having a good impression is really important in business. A company with a good image will have trust in more business. And it isn't only the boss that affects this image. Everyone involved in the company, including employees and families, contribute to this image. That means you too. You are a representative of your father's company, whether you like it or not. But I have nothing to do with the business. I'm just a little girl. Unfortunately, you do. Real world society associates you with your father's company. It doesn't matter what age you are. And now your actions have ruined the good image that your father worked so hard to achieve. No, I didn't. Don't say that. It's not my fault. Stop blaming me. I didn't think all this would happen. Why didn't someone tell me? Someone should have said something. Are you talking about your father and my husband? Well, that's the adult world. We thought everything was going well. We only wanted the children to get along and we felt that knowing all of this might affect your relationship. But we also didn't think that something like this could happen. Don't take away business from my father. I'm going to stop doing things to Elaine. You better apologize and change your ways. If you can do that, we can lessen the punishment. Lessen the what? You're not just going to forgive me? I'll apologize, so just forget it! If apologies fixed everything, we wouldn't need police or the court system. There are some things when words aren't enough. As a middle schooler, you should have known that by now. I didn't know. You can't act like a child and feign ignorance. Ignorance of the law can't save you now. I suggest that you pay better attention at school. We had already made our case to the police. It's too late. Everything is out of our hands now. You can't just leave me after saying all those scary things. You're being so mean. What am I supposed to do now? My daddy will get angry at me again. It was my duty to show you what the real world is like. If you didn't learn about it now, I would be scared for your future as an adult. But I might even be too late teaching you this lesson. Accept the consequences of your actions. And broaden your view of the world. My husband ended the contract with Stephanie's father's company. It wasn't long before the company went under. Repressed charges on Stephanie, and she was found guilty of all her crimes. Stephanie was sent to a juvenile detention center. But even after all that, Stephanie still didn't apologize. She only kept making excuses for herself. Her behavior amazed all of us until the end. After Stephanie's sentencing, her father was more strict with her and even refused to go see her in the detention center. The once adored Stephanie, who was on top of her caste system, couldn't take care of herself in the center. Even though she is only a teen, time spent there aged her. It damaged her sleek hair and ruined her skin. After spending three years in the detention center, Stephanie was let out. We heard that her father had started a new business, but his relationship with his daughter never mended. Their once loving home had gone cold. I also heard that Stephanie can't even look at her parents, and that she doesn't come out of her room anymore. On the other hand, Elaine joined the theater club in high school. She made new and real friends in that club and finally knows the true meaning of friendship. She looks like she is enjoying herself every day and looks forward to going to school. She is still a bit traumatized from what happened three years ago. We do our best to keep her mind off of it by taking her out or on trips. Overall, just trying to make her happy. We want her to meet new people and let her see the world beyond her small circle. We want her to know that there is a life and a society beyond her school. <laughs>